What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fowden, the man, Eric Sheetaber. We're going to be talking to tonight through tonight's Friday uh, MLB slate. Um, I had a mixed all over day yesterday. I had a good day slate. I had a bad night slate on DraftKings, and I finished fourth in the monster on FanDuel. And with, with that, I only played really one lineup over there. So, so it was a, overall a, a pretty, you know, uh, it was an okay day. I think I made a little bit of money, but, you know, getting kind of frustrated, ready to ready to take something down. It's a big Friday. Hopefully we can do something. Sheets, uh, t- talk about, you know, your same pain. I know that uh, Goldie went through the same thing that you did and uh, from last night, and then we'll uh, move on to today. Nah, so I played Philly, um, among other other things, but Philly is my main one, and they were off to a freaking flying start. And then uh, and then they went into delay. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't even notice. I didn't even think it was at risk at all. I didn't even notice it. And then uh, later on, when I came back, I saw the, that that you know that Roth had said it was yellow orange, and there was a chance for a delay or whatever. Even if that were the case, I probably would have still played them. So I'm not too worried about it. But um, uh, so that was the uh, that was my uh, my baseball night, and I'm ready to ready to hit today. All right, let's jump into it. Um, let's go game by game. I think that it's going to be. You know, it's funny, some slates, it feels like there's like 75 different pitching options. And to get days like today, I think there's other options, but I don't think they're nearly as clear as like, I think it's going to be a, a pretty chalky guys. That, I don't know, whatever. We'll see. Well, as we go through it. But like, I mean, before I get into we get into everything I did, I did think like C's and uh, Ray stand out, but it's not like we have these absolute must play top end pitching options like we sometimes do where you have C's with Cole or whatever I guess Cole's a bad example these days but you know what I mean we, we had some slates right. where it was literally like nine studs and it's just like okay well, we're just gonna randomly pick and they're all in great matchups and I don't know this is not that slate so let's get into it with uh starting with Baltimore and Pittsburgh um at first glance uh you have two of the worst teams in baseball and yeah, I guess you could get creative and do something here. I, I probably won't, but Baltimore is – they're fine. I, I don't have any desperate interest to play them, but they're they are they are fine if you want to take shots there. Uh, Rushman's price is back down to reasonable. But I, I, don't, I don't think I'm very interested in this game in general. Yeah, this – this at least an early look is the uh, – is, is the – is the uh... – is the game most in danger of being postponed? Um, right, we do have a lot of weather today at this early this early juncture. So fortunately, you're probably not going to have to play them. Um, I am not getting to either uh, either hitting environment here. Um, and with respect to the pitchers, I wonder if if I have either of these guys. Yeah, you know, I do have. Believe it or not, um, a, a, just some mild interest in now actually i thought it was going to be in in uh in uh in keller but it's actually a little bit in the dean kramer um but with 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 weather concerns um fortunately i'll probably end up not having to play <laughs> yeah yeah i think that's the, the right move uh, i do think i mean it's a good stolen base matchup for baltimore too if you wanted to play cedric mullins i think that would be totally fine if the weather was okay but all right, moving on to Philadelphia, Washington, and you've got Josiah Gray and Kyle Gibson. Another game that, if I'm not mistaken, that we again have some weather concerns, and I think we do. Um, they're probably going to do everything they can to try and get in their games today. But um, yeah, if this game, assuming this game was good to go, I would have interest in both pitchers, to be honest with you. I think that, I think Josiah Gray is getting a little too much disrespect. I mean, he's, what he is is a terrific GPP play every time. He can put up 35 fantasy points. He can strike his strikeout rate is awesome. He's going to give up some home runs. Um, I don't mind even if you want to stack against him. I, I I've done the same thing with him a lot of the season and and played stacks against him and also played him. Um, but I think Kyle Gibson at his price is probably going to be the more popular option against this pretty pathetic Washington lineup that sort of sim- somehow has been a little bit pesky so far. But uh, Kyle Gibson is probably going to be a reasonable play, assuming the weather is good to go. I don't think I'm going to stack Philly, but I, I wouldn't mind you. I wouldn't blame you for doing it. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of these pitchers that um, that are are okay uh, second uh, SP twos. If you didn't want to go both C's and Ray, um, and and Gibson is certainly at the you know near the top of the list as far as that's concerned. So mm-hmm. he's certainly good value here. Um, I also still like Philly as one of my t- one of the top stacks for the exact reason that Josiah Gray is also probably a good GPP play, like you were saying. You know, you get you get a big wide range of outcomes with him, um, and um, 
I think Philly remains fully in play here. So Philly and then uh, Gibson and, um, and, and as you said, I mean, Josiah Gray is just always in play. And I, I don't have anybody playing him in this particular. No, I don't think anybody's going to. And I mean, he's had some really tough matchups lately and um, probably worth noting last time he, put, he played the face, this team, he put up 32 fantasy points. Um, Jesus. And that was, you know, about five starts ago. And, and for an unowned guy, that's good enough for me. She says, we always say, so yep. I would take some shots there. Uh, we don't know who's pitching for Cleveland. Do you have a pitcher for Cleveland? I have zero. Okay. So I have no idea what to do with this game in terms of on that side. I do think that as I always say about Valdez, he's always going to be the low owned guy at the top. His K rate is actually a little better than people give him credit for, I think. And he's really frighteningly consistent, but not quite at the number you want for this price. So you can get, you can play an unknown Framber Valdez. I have no problem with it, but it's certainly not what I'm targeting doing today. Yeah. Not a great, not a great strikeout matchup as well um, yep. against Cleveland. Um I think, I mean, again, it's kind of silly to say without knowing who's pitching for Cleveland, but just kind of all us being equal, Houston is one of the top, uh, one of the top teams. Well, right? I think, in, I think if it's not Bieber, I think he, no matter what, right? Right? <laughs> right. Exactly. Else, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, so Houston has got to be one of them. And especially, you know, assuming they, they do, they do full launch. They haven't fully launched their, their, their new lineup yet with, with Vasquez and Mancini in there and Tucker in there. So if all those guys are in, I think that they're they're probably going to end up being a really good option, but it'll probably yeah. be a bullpen game for Cleveland. Yep. So I do like Houston, um, and uh, and uh, I'm I'm not quite getting the Valdez myself. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense to me. Um, here's the here's an interesting one. Uh, the Braves and and Mets here. Oh, I just want to point out again, just yet again. As a real life pitcher, Tywin Walker has actually been pretty damn good this year. You know, he's had quality starts. What is it now? In eight out of nine or nine out of 10 of his starts. That's I mean, in, in modern day baseball. That's just basically incredible. And he just missed it last time out. He is number. I, I'm not going to play him, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm more just thinking about it's really weird to see even with as good as he's been that Atlanta has a run total of 3.7. It just seems a little low. Um and at the same time, I kind of had a little bit of interest in Ian Anderson here at really low ownership. Um, the Mets, look, there's some talent there and they they work counts and that there's a lot of things that I'd be afraid of. But Ian Anderson at 6,800, I mean, we just saw the upside last time out. He had 34 yeah. fantasy points and and he has the upside to get there. I mean, even if he put, give you 15 to, to if you thought 15 to 20 with an upside of 30 of 30 plus. I don't know. I feel like there's a probably a reach to get to 30 plus, but I, I don't know. I think he's mildly interesting as if you're going to do the weird spend down thing along the Kremer lines. I think I'd rather play Ian, Ian Anderson than that personally. But uh, at first, it's, it's probably a stay away game, to be honest. Yeah, for me, it's it's mostly a stay away game. Um, uh, but both both uh, pitches are good enough to keep me off the hitting and both hitting environment. Both hitters are strong enough to keep me off the pitcher. So I'm probably going to just uh, avoid this. Yeah, I think that that's probably a good call. Um, I do think that if, you know, look, it's it's one of those things with Atlanta where if it's a smaller slate again, like yesterday, I, I really think that on those slates and, and I and I sort of I got onto a little bit of them late and not that it's right or wrong or result. I don't want to be results oriented, but we were talking with Eric Johnson in our live chat. And and I just think that they they have like whenever they're against just an adequate pitcher, you should always be thinking like, OK, we can take shots with Atlanta here because they just have so much power in that lineup and you get a nice price on Darno now at catcher and. I don't know. I just just throwing that out there for future future slates. Tampa Bay, Detroit. Um, boy, I, I really don't love playing Corey Kluber in general. Um, <laughs> uh, he's been good lately. He's and he, and he flashed this he, against the team. It doesn't strike out in Cleveland. He had 10 strikeouts in his last start. Um, he's been good enough to where I think we absolutely have to consider him against Detroit here. And I think he's actually pretty, pretty high on the list, to be honest with you. And I think on this, at the same time, I'm I'm fully ready and and totally okay with going back to Tampa Bay. What I like about stacking Tampa Bay in general is you get Low and uh, or Lau and Rosarena with the power and speed upside. Paredes is a little bit underrated and cheap. Ch Choi is cheap with enough power. They've got Peralta in the lineup now at only three K. 
those would be the five guys I would I would focus on. And then you could always throw in instead of one of those guys, as Jose Siri for minimum. So I actually do think Tampa is the first stack that and and this is probably, you know, nothing new to anybody who's, who's listening to me these days. I always I'm always looking to stack against Detroit. <laughs> um, and it's because their they their pitching is always uh, questionable and their um their, I, I still don't think their bullpen is very good, especially if you can get to the starter early. So I, I like to I like Tampa Bay quite a bit today. Yeah, I have Tampa as one of the top values on the board uh, as well. And I'm not quite getting to Kluber. I just think there are just some better options. Um, not, I mean, Detroit's certainly a good matchup for anybody. And Kluber's he's been you know f- passable, right? He's been um, good, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just not quite getting him today. I just have better options, I think. Um, but I think definitely think Tampa is, is a very strong pick. Yep. Um, all right. So same page there. Then we get over to Texas and Chicago. Uh, Dylan Sees and Glenn Otto. Uh, uh, look, uh, I'm not going to play Glenn Otto. I'm just going to point out again just how bad the White Sox have been against right-handed pitching this season. I tried to get them yesterday against the lefty. Didn't get, didn't get Didn't win me anything. Um, I think this is a, I mean, I think Dylan sees is a great option. He's one of the best strikeout pitchers in baseball. I feel like people have overthought it. I loved playing him earlier in the season when he was a thousand less than all the guys, but he had a, a, at least a full strikeout higher prop than anybody else did. So sees is the chalky SP one, in my opinion. And I, I can't really argue with it terribly. Um, I think, I think, I think he's a, I think he's a good play. I, I don't really know what else to say about it, but, uh, he's going to be popular. How about you? You know, it's interesting. I mean, just to, give you an idea of uh something we discussed looking at his game log here and you see like the strikeouts you see the one spot where he wasn't able to strike the guys out was cleveland i mean this cleveland this cleveland thing's no joke you oh know? It, it, it's not yeah that is not a narrative thing that's a real thing You're yeah right. they don't they don't they don't they don't like to swing and miss <laughs> you no, know? they really don't they don't care what else they do but they just won't swing and miss yeah so uh listen on a slate like this i mean there's there's uh uh I can I can find you better point per dollar plays than than C's, but I just can't find you those these strikeouts anywhere except for Ray. You know what I mean? I, I really don't yeah. think I can do it. So I think he's going to just show up. Um, and it's and Texas is you know they're they're not great. Um, so I, I and I also unfortunately feel as though they're going to be really popular, right? I mean, like the C's Ray pop the C's Ray oh, yeah. pairing just like that because just because Ray is so cheap, you know. That 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 people are going to be able to play this really really easily. So, um, can I can Cease. I read you something kind of amazing about Cease? So you want to hear his last starts, what he's done, earn yeah. or just earn run wise, and this is, he already he always has the amazing strikeout stuff. But I am looking heavily this zero 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 one 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 zero 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 zero. Right. <laughs> it's like a more. This guy's morse code over here <laughs> he's got two bad games really the whole season i know it's really it's actually like it's pretty impressive but uh yeah so i i do like cease for what it's worth <laughs> i think that's pretty clear. he lost two he, wait, here's some of his losses he lost two to one to detroit right and then oh then he got rocked over there okay um but, i mean he's been, I, I think two of his three losses were against boston <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and he's, but he's uh, exactly other than Boston, he's been pretty damn awesome. Um, what does he get? He's given up 26 runs in 21 starts this season. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> I mean, all right. Uh, all right. Moving on. So, so yeah. So, so, so for those who want to get super contrarian and, and want to stack against the pitchers, Dylan sees may not be your guy to do that against. You, know, you want to play Seager is a one-off or something like that. I mean, something like that's fine. But like, I mean, it's, it's really asking for a lot on a full slate to try to pick on the guy who's been the best pitcher in baseball, basically over what 12 starts now his last 12 or actually for the whole season. Basically, if you take away those two Red Sox games, um, all right, Toronto, Minnesota, uh, little, little, uh, little revenge here for, for Berrios. Um, I like it. I like it a lot, actually. Yeah. I think that the price is a little too low on him and there's enough strikeouts for me to, to get on board. So I, I, I think that Berrios is actually a guy I'm going to use today. I like Molly a lot as a pitcher. I think it was a really good pickup for Minnesota, but there is no way in hell I will play him against Toronto. And I actually think a low owned Toronto might end up finding its way into some of my lineups today, but I, I don't have them as a priority to start with. 
Yeah, much. I mean, I have Barrios once again, not as high as some other guys, but um, <clears throat> listen, I don't think there's much dispute. I mean, he's been better this year. You know, um, he's just been better. Mm -hmm. I don't know what what he was doing the last couple of years, whatever. But he's, he's always had really good stuff. Yeah. Um, so so I so I like it. Um, you know, I don't love it, but that's why he's probably gonna be low owned, you know. So so I mean, he's gotta be low owned. I mean, like everybody's gonna play these other guys. Um, and if you're not gonna play Ray and Cease, I mean you'll probably play, you know, Gibson or something, you know what I mean? Or or Lauer. We'll get to him in a minute. Um but the weird part is like you look at it with the Gibson thing, and yeah, sure, Gibson has a, a better matchup, but like Barrios has been like not only has he been like much better this season, I don't want to say like he's he's been like he's had he had two really terrible starts in a row. And outside of that, he he was on like a he'd be on like a what a 10 or 11 game streak where he's just been really awesome, to be honest. And he's had some matchups that are just as tough as this, including Philly. Um, and he's got a huge upside. So I I I mean, if you're talking about in general GPPs, I think that you're supposed to play guys like Barrios more than guys like Gibson when they're similarly priced. Now I know the match, even if the matchup's a little bit tougher, just because I think that Barrios, and I think this is a joke, this four and a half K prop for Barrios. Um, I think people think that Minnesota strikes out less than they do. And Barrios has literally his last, what, five starts. He's been over six Ks. I, I don't, really don't understand this number to be honest with you, but that's a bet that you should get in as, as soon as long as it's there. If it was five and a half, I would still probably take the over on Barrios for strikeouts today. What, what's the, uh, what's the K prop on Greinke? <laughs> it's usually three and a half. Yeah. Three and a half. Three and a half is the is the normal one. Um, who knows? Maybe Boston throws out a really terrible lineup, but otherwise, I don't think that we can. I don't know. This is is this this is a game where I feel like you have the pitchers so cheap and they're supposed to strike out nobody, and and yet I'm not finding myself overly like crazy interested in it. Um, that's just me. How about you? I, well, I mean, Tino and maybe maybe some KC, I guess. Yeah, as always, I'm getting the KC. I mean, like you said, I mean, whenever Michael Taylor is on, on the board, we're going to <laughs> gonna have, to, gonna have to talk about him. Um, and uh, there's nobody over 5K on the team, which is uh, which is worth noting. Um, so I definitely have Kansas City. It's actually one – I mean, it's point per dollar. I think it's an extremely strong value, actually. So mm -hmm. I'm going to um, I'm gonna probably take shots at that. Especially for a pitcher who gives up some power and I think you're going to be able to run on now. He's still pretty fresh, but he has, he definitely has like a slower delivery from the plate. I did a little, uh, you know, I heard, well, I heard of, I heard a few things on some podcasts. I think there is some upside for this KC roster in a lot of different ways. And I, I, I think you're right. I think the KC is, is a very strong play today. Um, and Boston is fine. I just, I just have a really hard time playing them outside of Boston. And it's also really weird to see against Granky them only have a four and a half I thought they would have been like the super chalk, like five plus five and a half K, you know, run scored, you know, and Granky has been, has been better a little bit his last couple starts, but like, he's, I mean, he just doesn't have it anymore. And he can't strike anybody out, which again, the Boston doesn't strike out a ton. I, I like to play guys like, you know, against guys who don't strike anybody out. I want to play the guys who strike out a ton. Cause when they put the ball in play, they go crazy. Um, Boston doesn't really have a ton of that. So uh yeah, I think I think that like Boston's fine, and I think KC is is definitely a really good play. So I, I'm I'm on the KC board. I'm on board with KC for you. All right, uh, Cincinnati, Milwaukee, and I will not be probably playing. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Eric Lauer is going to project well. Um, I think he's regressing back to the to the what he is, and I think he has been since the very beginning of the season where he was just on fire. But Cincinnati is a team that you can kind of pick on a little bit. I, I'm sort of stuck. I don't think I'm going to end up playing him. And then I'm just wondering, I think we're going to get a ton of owners. Well, no, I guess actually not. Uh, if that's the case, Milwaukee is an absolutely awesome stack. You always have to worry about a little bit of like pinch, whatever, whether it's fielding for Tellez and later in the game. There's always some weird stuff. They could always switch Wong into somebody else and, 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 and if they bring in a lefty. But for the most part, this just feels like a, a great stack to me. And I, I do like them a lot, especially if they're really not going to be owned. I don't, I don't Maybe it's the pricing that's keeping people off of them. But, you know, I think you, could, you, know, you play them along with KC with the cheapies or something like that, or Tampa Bay's cheapies even. I think that's a really, a really good stack today in Milwaukee. Yeah, I find it difficult to, um, to believe that, that Milwaukee is going to be low owned, similar to the way, the way you're, you're looking at it. I mean, they're, they're showing up for me as the top overall stack. And 
just quite honestly, when they show up for me as a top overall stack, they're just they're just not going to be low owned. You know what I mean? Like you, 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 they might be they might be low enough owned for you to play them still. Mm -hmm. But I've just been doing this a while now, and it's if I'm coming up with this, they're, it's just they're just they're just going to be popular. They just are. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I uh, and, and Lauer, as as you as you uh, correctly um, uh, stated, I mean he is going to project well. Um, however. You know, I don't think you have to play him. You know what I mean? Like, like you could just play Cease and Ray. You know what I mean? Like, so, so I think that I would rather, in, now that I'm thinking about this, instead of playing Lauer at, he'll, he'll probably be the chalk non Ray, you know what I mean? Cease build, right? Yeah, somewhere between him and Barrios, but I think it'll or be. Or even, or I, well, I actually have Gibson, like just to, oh, I have Gibson, Gibson 15%. Yeah, that's fair. So, um, I mean, he's in the mix, but again, we'll watch ownership a little bit. But maybe, but maybe you're right. I mean, if Lauer is is kind of in regress mode, I mean that 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 tends to flush out over time. You know what I mean? So I, I maybe maybe he is kind of an avoid here. Yeah, one thing to keep an eye out, and if if you want to take the chance, I think like if you get Senzel in the lineup at 2400, I'm still willing to bet on the long term talent as bad as he's been. Um, and he and he he will he'll be batting high in the order. Aquino is two K. I'm not saying you, you certainly shouldn't be trying to stack Cincinnati, but I think taking some of these. I mean, if you're looking for minimum cost bats, they certainly have some to offer that I think have some upside. All right, um, Cortez and Dakota Hudson in St. Louis. Um, I mean, I'll tell you what: the Yankees outside of Yankee Stadium can still hit, and they are going to be very low owned against a guy who I don't have. I don't think he's all that great. Decent bullpen behind him. Um, I, I think the Yankees, I, I, I'm kind of interested in a very low on Yankee stack today. Um, they're not my priority, but I think that they are certainly one of the better stacks that are, that, I mean, early ownership projections have them just completely overlooked, like no interest at all. And I just get the feeling if this game was in Yankee stadium, their run total would be like a full run higher. And you've got a guy who gives up some hard contact in, in Dakota Hudson um so I, I could i could see the yankees just jumping on him here and they are expensive so it's going to keep people off of them judge as usual is always probably the best play on the slate because he gets a home run every day um even though he hasn't for a few days now but i don't know i i, I do like the yankees um as a as a sort of contrarian stack which feels weird to say out loud um are you interested in cortez no uh, i'm not i'm not quite getting there um again i just go back to the other options Yep. But I do I do think that oh man, can I get to the Yankees? They're gonna be low owned, I think. <laughs> that is kind of sick, owned. right? Yeah. Um I think I'd prefer Toronto um than the Yankees. Interesting. I like the Yankees because you have Hudson who can have control problems and then when he is missing, he misses like he gets hit really hard. So okay. I just I have them a little bit higher, but I, I definitely understand the argument for Toronto. I'm never gonna argue against Toronto or the Yankees, to be honest with you um in any sort of matchup right uh all right mad bum and marquee this is one of those that if this game was being played in in colorado that everybody would be all over i mean this would be the colorado ultimate ultra chalk because people love to play against marquee there's plenty of righties to stack for colorado uh, i'm sorry they love to play against Bumgarner. excuse me um and uh I, I actually think that I this I, I'm not going to stack the Rockies, I don't think, here, but I certainly am not going to fault anybody for doing it. Bumgarner is all over the map. He'll have an amazing outing, and then he just gets completely rocked. Very hard to figure out what to do with him. He pitched six innings the other day and had no strikeouts, which is really hard to do. Um, and the and against this, you know, Colorado team, he's had he's had good results actually this season, but um I don't know. It feels like we should at least mention the Rockies here. And, and I don't think, I mean, look, I don't think I'm going to play marquee either, but I don't think he's that much different than Kyle Gibson. In fact, I think he has a higher K prop and his, his projection should probably be a little bit higher than it is. Um, but I don't, I don't, I'm not especially interested in this game. I'm just trying to think of different things to do. How about you? See, this is the problem. You know, I think all these guys are kind of cool, kind of like fancy play plays. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, maybe a little too much. You know, I, I think Marquis totally cool with 7,300 against Arizona on the road. You know what I mean? Instead mm -hmm. of Colorado. I, 
And I totally, in a weird, sick way, I think Bumgarner's playable. You know what I, I mean? Right. Spot too. <laughs> but, 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 but who needs it? You know what I mean? Right, I, I just right. that that's kind of where where I'm looking at this slate. I mean, I think I'm just going to end up chalking out here and just playing Cease and Ray or something like that, and then just try to do some, or maybe Barry or something. But and then do some funny business in in the hitting or something because these other these matchups are really really strong. Um, mm-hmm. uh, well, I shouldn't say I shouldn't necessarily say the Cease matchup is is particularly. I guess it is. He's against Texas. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I think I think that. That that we'll end up we can end up talking ourselves into these plays, but I think in the end I'm probably not going to play it. Yeah, I'm just going through. I'm, this, this is not yeah. like I'm not, I'm not trying to do what other shows do, where I like yeah. this guy. Like I'm just I'm just throwing out different options. This is the first look. This is what we're you know going through it, and and I just think I think they're worth mentioning and considering. But at, at the end of the day, I think you're right. We're gonna we're gonna jump over to the next game, and I think that that's what we are gonna do is is play Robbie Ray. Um, I I really don't see a good argument if you if you ever play Robbie Ray. And he's been horrible his last two starts. Now, in his defense, those were against Houston. Before that, he was lighting it up. He was back to last season, Robbie Ray. He was putting up, you know, what, 30s and 37s and and 28s and 29s and nothing below 19 for eight straight games or 10, nine straight games, including games against Boston and Toronto. And I just think that he's a, a – you put him against this Angels lineup. They did hit six home runs yesterday. Somehow they still lost, the Angels, but – um I, I really like uh, Robbie Ray here, and I'm going to take a quick look to see what kind of pitchers umpire we have. We don't have the umpire information yet. Robbie Ray and C's are the only guys above six and a half K props, and they both have seven and a half K props, and they're both favored to to hit those props. I I, I, I think it's very hard for me to argue why Robbie Ray isn't a really good play here. Um, unlike most people, I actually think Patrick Sandoval, or under like a lot of people, I think he's actually a better pitcher than he gets credit for. Uh, having said that, there is. I, I don't have a problem if you, I just, I don't want to stack in Seattle on a 15 game or whatever, a million game slate. Um, but I, yeah, I wouldn't fault you for, for, for playing Carlos Santana at 2,500 if you wanted to go really cheap, but I, I don't think I'm going to be doing the Seattle thing. Um, but I, yeah. do, I have Ray as number one, actually ahead of, I, I have Ray as number one by a lot actually. Um, and then, um, and it's the weird, you know, I like have Sandoval is like a totally reasonable, you know, reasonable value, but, uh, who number one who needs it number two seattle's good man i mean i don't need to i don't need to mess with that so so i'm probably just gonna um probably just avoid it um uh, with the exception of just the robbie ray side of things mm-hmm. makes sense all right uh san diego and la possibly that i mean along with the yankees the two best teams in baseball now well once san diego gets everybody back but even if they don't this is a they're significantly better than they have been um they obviously, you know, won the trade deadline by a freaking landslide. And yet they're still a big, uh, a big underdog to the Dodgers with one of their better pitchers out there. So uh Manaya is, you know, the kind of guy who historically would give the Dodgers problems. But I mean, if you tell me again, like the Dodgers and Yankees end up unowned on a slate, I could just stack the Dodgers and Yankees and feel really good about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And Manaya is a guy who can get himself into trouble quite a bit. So I mean the, the lefty and off speed stuff is the is the reason why he would be tough for the Dodgers, but the fact that he you know he has a, he has trouble with his control so often that's something you can't do against the Dodgers and expect to get away with it. If if he, if he walks four or five guys in one of these games, he's getting lit up. Um, you just can't get away with it with this team. So I, I I think that Mookie and and Trey Turner are my highest level of interest guys. Maybe it's more of a mini stack with the Dodgers because they're so expensive and it is a good pitcher they're facing. But I, I could see getting to to some bats and and I and I think just for fun I'm probably going to throw in a really low on Yankees Dodgers combination stack just just because I mean these guys are completely unowned and as 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 you know the Yankees especially are not in a bad spot um, but the Dodgers I I could just see you know if Manaya gets a little bit wild I just think the Dodgers could tee off here and it's nice hitting weather wind blowing out in LA 75 degrees uh, which for LA is pretty good um so i i i'm on board with like a, a you know a, a long shot dodger stack but mostly it's not a priority and and the reason why I'm, I'm sort of you know fumbling through some of these other stacks is because i like tampa bay and milwaukee a lot but to say that like oh those are the these stacks are going to win me all the money on this slate it feels kind of funny when then you have the dodgers and yankees at like 150 ownership or even lower possibly and they're nobody's going to play them, and they're at just even just in an average spot, they they usually outscore those teams anyway. So that's 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 why I'm sort of thinking about them. What do you think of this game? 
yeah, I mean, if we, you know, we should play Yankee Dodger stack, we got to get used to it because we're going to be playing both of them in, in the showdown slate in the world series when we're at the game. Exactly. So, That's right. so, so we got to get used to uh, always making sure that we know who to play when the Dodge and the Yankees are in there. Yep. Um, I, I don't, I don't know if I could do it. I mean, I, when I was looking at the slate at first, I was saying, okay, there's Milwaukee, Houston, Philly. Right. And then for me, I'm like, all right, so who are the guys that who are the, who are the teams that no one's going to play that, that always have good hitters? And it would be Toronto Yankees and Dodgers. So I'm looking at uh, Toronto Yankees and Dodgers, right? So I'm looking at all three of them, and then I'm like, all right, who the hell did Dodgers up against? Like, oh, Manaya, really? But may, may, maybe I shouldn't be like that worried about him because um, if he's off, then we maybe we can get after him a little bit. Um, yeah, and and but for what it's worth, the Dodgers, from what I remember, the last two times I know it happened. One was a couple of years ago. One was last year when they faced him when he was with Oakland. I believe they scored twelve runs one time and sixteen runs the other time. They've hit eight home runs off of him in sixty nine plate appearances. That's pretty crazy. Um, I'm not saying these are that, that like the BVP. It's not a huge sample size. But eight home runs and sixty nine appear sixty nine at bats is pretty is pretty nuts. So I maybe I will talk myself into the Dodgers because I just don't love anything else so much that I feel like I need to play it today. Um, depending on who's pitching for Cleveland, of course, or what's going to happen there, because Houston I think would be the standout team if uh, if it's if it's not a bullpen game. If it's a bullpen game, I'm a little less interested in Houston. But you know what I want to look into also. I want to see if if, if Milwaukee is gonna is is has been pinch hitting since that last time I I tilted from them pinch hitting their guys. Well, um, part of it I think that I think it might have been defensive subs last uh, last time. If I'm no, I, um, I don't think. Oh, so. you're right. It was pinch. Wait, but did they pinch hit straight up for Tellez? That seems really weird. Uh, I believe me. so. <laughs> if a, in a lefty lefty, I guess so. I mean, yeah, these guys like Tellez and and, and Jock Peterson, it's just a, a risk that you have to take with them sometimes because. If you bring in a lefty, but let me just double check who, who I, I'll, I'll take a look and see how many lefties are in the bullpen, even um, in that game. Now tell us it's 5,100. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like. Yeah, I don't know how many lefties the Reds have in the bullpen. I got to double check that one. Um, no, you're at that I, San Martin. Is he lefty? I'm trying to think of these. I can't remember guys. off the top of my head, to be honest with you. Um, you don't but, remember all the splits of Rene San Martin off the top of your head? It's, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, right. I, I, I mean, tell is, is, is just, a has been sort of like a, a sleeping monster to see whole season. And, um, I, I, I not even him. sleeping. The guy just hits a home run. Every, it seemed like every time he's, I know, home run. I hear you. Um, Does he have 20 home runs. So, uh, yeah, oh yeah, he's runs. got, uh, what does 21. he got now? He's got more than that. I think No, uh, he's got 21. Only that's 20. what I'm saying. It seems like he's had 21 in the last five games, but that's like... that's that's true. I know it's it's a it's a little surprising that it's not even more. But but I mean, in all fairness, he's only done that in you know he's basically he's not, if if he was getting full at bats this season, he'd be on pace to hit what 45 or 50. Right. Uh, he had three, he's had 300. Well, so I guess 42. So if he had 600 at bats, he'd be on pace for 42. Like I mean, um, he's just not playing every day necessarily, and he like you said, he gets pinch hit for sometimes. So. Um, the question is, is, so here's one more thing I just want to throw out about that, because I think the pinch hitting thing is a, is a real thing we talk about and it matters. But what, what you look at, we should look at too, though, is the, the batters you have around him. Um, because you do have Yelich at the top of the lineup, who is a lefty, but, and then you, it depends on where they hit Wong today, but I'm guessing they hit him second. So it depends on like what part comes up. Like if he's coming up, but then you've got Renfro and McCutcheon behind him and your lefty has to pitch to three guys why would you bring in a lefty just to pitch, just to get him out of the game? And then you have a lefty against two guys who are really good against lefties. You know what I mean? Right. So it's just, it's just, it depends on how that, how that it's just some luck of the draw, whether he could, whether he would actually get pinched for, but most of the time he's going to get his four at bats um, or more, hopefully. Uh, so that's what I've got for the, you know, to, to break this down. I have Tampa Bay and Milwaukee as my preferred stacks uh, Dodgers and Yankees as my sneaky ones, Houston TBD and KC for value. So mostly things are going to be built around Tampa Bay and Milwaukee for me with, with the KC value. Um, and actually as a full stack too, uh, C's Ray Kluber Berrios are my favorites. I will mix in um, a little bit of Gibson and Lauer. Uh, I don't want to use Lauer, but after going through everybody, I think that the up, I just think the, there's enough upside to use it. I don't know. Maybe I won't. I, I, my, I'll, I should trust my first instinct, which was to avoid him. But uh, I might throw them into a lineup or two. How about you, Sheets? For any any priority stacks? Um, Milwaukee, Houston, Philly, KC, Tampa, 
those are my top. And then I got to look at those, that, those, uh, those pivots, the L, the Dodgers, Yankees and, and, uh, and Toronto. Yeah. Um, and, and your, what did you, what you say what your pitch, your pitching was? My pitching is, 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 is Ray and, is Ray and C's for now. Um, and I, 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 can't, I don't know how to get off of that. Um, That's so fair. we'll see what happens. Nothing wrong with that. Um, all right, guys, and I will have my my bets, my picks, and uh, my early my early bets of the day up early up soon. Can I just say a quick f you to Corey Connors for destroying all of my lineups this week? Um, very very frustrating, and also uh, uh, an old trust your instinct thing. I should have trusted myself with the John Huh thing a little bit, especially when I did play a lot of cheap guys, and I'm angry at myself for not doing so. So that's that. Uh, my my golf. Spiel. Well, I mean, in in fairness. You know, uh, Corey Connors was been bad. Was bad the whole. Uh, was bad the whole time. And and you want to see the yeah, ultimate fu? Yeah, go the ahead. ultimate fu. First of all, did he not make the cut yet? He's minus minus one. That's no good. No, it's not minus one. Won't make it, but um, minus minus two will likely. But he's out though. He's he's done right. Yeah, he's done at minus one. Yeah, well, he finished strong because he was he was one over with two to go, um, but. Yeah, that's not good. I mean, I guess it's a nine percent. I, I got to line up in 60, 60 second place with with with, oh. with Connors in it. Oh, Pass get it. there, get yeah. there. You may, maybe it happens. Maybe everybody struggles today. It's really tough. well because I got the Tom Kim. He's T one now. Yeah, that's right. Um, and um, I got I got a Huck Kim lineup. <laughs> it's uh yeah the the Huck Kim Brandon Wu, all these guys are 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 just smashing. Could Kadira Kadira. Um, I could have done my old thing where I played, you know, the different Asian Americans and then Asians, and it would have, it might have been a good week to do that. <laughs> yeah, it looks like minus two is the number. Yeah, um, I think it's going to be minus yeah. two, but there's a chance. I mean, it's it, it, everybody's struggling a lot more today than they did yesterday. My design. Dude, you see, Munoz was like plus four in the first two holes or something like that. <laughs> oh, I know. And then he, yeah, he destroyed it. He was the other killer for for me. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that was there, there, there were almost. Good. There will almost certainly be some showdown slates put up for, for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so you go the other way. Sometimes I like to do it only if I'm in contention and I like hedge almost. I use it almost as like a hedge. Uh, um, but all right, man. So good luck to everybody. I will be live at six and knowing it's Friday, it's probably dinner night with the with uh, Mrs. Sheets. Is that correct? Most likely. Okay. So have a great night and good luck to everybody out there. Hopefully uh, I'll be in Discord all day. And if you got anything going, uh, any questions or any thoughts, uh, let me know. And uh, yeah, let's have a good slate, guys.